Wow. I have a lemon Tesla. Hey guys, so what's up? I recently just got some news from Tesla today. Today is uh, the 12th. And for the last four months or so, three or four months, I've been involved with Tesla. The issue that I've been having with this car, I haven't really had any problems at all with it other than just like super small things, um, but nothing like a normal gas vehicle. So like I haven't had to do like any service appointments for like anything of major note until recently. Well, actually about a year ago, I started noticing this strange like clicking sound and I'm going to put in some clips here uh, and I actually made little recordings just kind of going back to about a year ago um, of the Tesla making some clicking sounds. I have some, some I don't, but I'm going to insert some clips here on what this noise that I was hearing. It's a really strange noise. I'd never heard it in another vehicle before. I'd never heard of this problem before. Um, but yeah, let's, let's, let's roll some of those clips here. What's up guys? Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not sure if I'm ever going to use this video or not, but, uh, it's, uh, May 22nd. I just went into Tesla a couple days ago for a clicking sound that I've been hearing, uh, from my car. Um, and the sound is back and I've, I'm kind of done. I think this is my third or fourth time now trying to get this issue resolved. So <sighs> looks like I got to look into that lemon law thing. I'm not sure. Not sure if that's a difficult process or what all needs to happen for me to get that looked at, or I don't know how many times I gotta try and fix it. I thought it was three times, but this is going on four or five times now that I've tried to, to fix it. I don't know if you guys can hear the sound. I'm gonna try and get a uh, like a sound clip of it um, for you guys to hear it. Um, anyways, I'm just driving around and you can't really hear it like when I'm like on a normal road. You basically only hear it when uh, you know, it's uh, quiet where I'm not using the AC, the windows are down. It's when you can generally hear it. I'm gonna just be quiet here. Let me see if I can let you hear it here. I don't know if you can hear that or not. I'll flip the camera around now and try another way. See, I just driving around. Um, there's a car behind me, so I can't slow down, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna try and get onto a side road here and let you guys hear it. Try to hear it, I'll try and go a little slower here. happy about this I, I'm gonna call or I'm gonna get onto the app and schedule another service appointment maybe give them one more chance yeah you know I'm I understand that Tesla's a new company and they're trying to figure things out and I've been pretty patient already but I think I'm just gonna give them one more chance and schedule another appointment and then if it uh, fixes great you'll probably never see this video but if not I think I got to go forward with the lemon law because, I mean, the car's only three years old. Yeah. Like, and I can't stand any type of rattles, vibrations, anything like that in a car. Like, I cannot stand it. Yeah, I can't. No. No. Sorry. Lemon Law. I gotta look into it, guys. I hope you never have to see this video. And, uh... I hope that's it. I'm going to fix it and hopefully that'll be the end of it and you'll never have to hear or see this video. But uh, if not, I'll update you whenever that happens. I don't know how long it takes, but we'll figure something out. I've got um, my service receipts, my service records. Uh, the first time I went in for service was October 7th, 2021. So I'd had the car for about a year and a half. Um, and what they had done to try and remedy the situation was they resealed the upper control ball joints. And, you know, that actually solved the issue for about a week and a half, two weeks. Uh, and then I slowly noticed the, the sound coming back. This isn't something that I would notice if I was listening to the radio or driving on the highway. It was only like 
when I was coming home at night, when I turned the radio off and the AC wasn't running, like I, I couldn't hear this sound otherwise. So I would have never noticed it. But I noticed it again, so I made another service appointment to go back, and I went back March 28th, 2022. That's after I'd gotten down here to Florida. Um, and so what they had done for that, they once again reattempted to uh, lubricate and reseal the ball joints. And once again, the problem went away for about two weeks. Again, it comes back. I schedule another service appointment for May 20th, 2022. And this time they actually came on me with a test drive and I sat here with a gentleman uh, from the service department and we went on a quick little, he thought we were gonna have to go for a long drive, but literally he sat in the car and I just barely tapped the accelerator and you could hear those sounds. And he's like, oh, yeah, that's that should definitely be looked at, you know. So we, you know, had the car go in there, and they gave me Uber credits, and the car was there for a couple of days. Um, and what they had done that time was they, see, on the, according to the invoice, they uh, lubricated the left and right rear drive units and the half shaft. And once again, I come and pick up the car. They say the problem's fixed. They did their own test drive. No more sounds. No more clicking. Great. I pick up the car. I'm driving home, I pick up the kids from school, and when I'm pulling into the driveway, what did I hear? Yeah, not even a day went by without that sound. And I was just so frustrated, and then that's the point in May that I started researching the Lemon Law, because I knew that, hey, there has to be something that can be done here. Do I need to talk to somebody else? Do I need to visit a different service center? Um, so once again, I schedule yet another service appointment, this time for June 21st, 2022. Uh, so this time, they replaced the rear axle nuts and washers. That's all they did. They replaced the nuts and the washers, retorqued them. Oh, and then they also said, we replaced the rear half shafts. So once again, the car was there for a few days, and I get the car back. The car runs great. I'm like... Finally, I'm like, finally, they finally fixed the issue. And three days later, yep, you guessed it. The problem was back. So basically, just to educate everyone, what uh, the Lemon Law states is, and this is from, from Tesla directly, it states that if this vehicle does not conform to its applicable warranties and Tesla has not repaired the vehicle after a reasonable number of attempts, this is four or five times now, or the vehicle has been out of service for a specified number of days, you may be entitled under the provisions of your state, Lemon Law, to a replacement or repurchase of the vehicle. Should you seek a replacement or repurchase under the Lemon Law, you must use the dispute settlement program prior to initiating court action. I call the number, uh, and the, it was like a 1-800 number, and I think it's on Tesla's website, but I started a dispute with the settlement program prior to initiating, and I never had to file or initiate any type of court action, just wanted to state that. I never had to get a lawyer involved, um, but I did have to start a dispute uh, under the settlement program. They had to do their due diligence, and they had to look through all of my receipts, and they had to look through all of my service appointments and they had to call the service advisors from the service centers that I had been to and then I hear nothing. Like it has been since the end of June that I haven't heard anything from Tesla until the last few weeks. Now about three weeks ago, I heard back and said, hey, what, here are your options. One, we can just completely buy the vehicle back, um, repurchase the car for what you purchased it for minus the interest. So I would still be responsible for the interest that I paid towards this vehicle. And I was like, okay, that works, but then what am I supposed to drive? You know, like I need a car, obviously. Uh, and so I was more interested in the replacement program. And as we all know right now, if you order a Tesla, and if you order a Tesla Model X specifically, you're in for a little bit of a wait. Uh, most Teslas, you're about six months, eight months, 10 months. I think for the Tesla Model X long range, you're about a year, uh, a year wait. Uh, 
And I honestly thought that's what my situation was going to be. And so I said, hey, you know, I want to do a replacement. Uh, can I continue to drive this car until I get the replacement? And they said, yes, absolutely. Uh, schedule another service appointment so we can try and look at it again. And I actually have a scheduled service appointment for like next week. Um, so anyways, two weeks ago, I get an email stating that they have secured a replacement vehicle for me early. And I get to pick up delivery of the new Tesla uh, long range Tesla 2022. Now it's got the refreshed interior. I'm kind of stoked. It's got air conditioned seats. So it's got some nice upgrades. Um, and basically I'm just getting this car as a straight swap, like exactly what I paid before. They're just replacing it, uh, with a new model X and this car has just a few hundred miles on it. I believe it was like a demo vehicle. Uh, and you know, I'm stoked. Uh, it's got the full warranty. Uh, it's not white this time. They said they had a blue one and a red one. And so I actually let my kids take a vote. We had, uh, two people, my, my wife and I believe my son both chose red and then my other son and my daughter chose blue. And so I was the deciding, uh, vote and I figured, Hey, the school that I graduated from their colors were red and white. So we've had a white one. Let's go with a red one. So I'm going to take you along for the ride, what the experience is like having a buyback. Like, is it any different than like a trade-in? Like, what's the process like? Hopefully this video is helpful for you guys. I will catch up with you guys tomorrow and we'll pick it up from there. Uh, so it's a new day, clearly. Uh, and I just got a text message from Tesla stating that uh, the replacement vehicle has arrived to Florida. It is currently at the Eatonville Service Center. So, uh, and they said that I could come up today uh, to the Eatonville to do my inspection and their final inspection on my car um, for the repurchasing replacement of my uh, white, my 2019 uh, Model X. And I actually did consider at one point just getting like a Model Y because um, or a Model 3 because the, the wait times were lower on those. But I'm thrilled to say that Tesla was able to find and secure a demo vehicle, but a 2022 Model X uh, that qualifies for this uh, repurchase replacement solution that they have presented to me. So I'm going to go home, get cleaned up, and head on up there and I will take you along with me and we'll see what it's like and what the process is like. Uh, I have no idea like how long it'll take. They just told me to get there around 930. So that's in about an hour from now. I'm here driving my Tesla, my 2019 Model X for probably the last time. Uh, headed up to the Eatonville Tesla Service Center slash Delivery Center. Um, I've actually brought my car here, this particular car there, I believe two or three times now for service for this issue that I've been dealing with that I've already explained. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of a bittersweet. This car has been amazing. I've loved driving this car. Even with the issues that I've had with it, it's still been the best car I've ever had. Uh, my favorite car I've ever had. So yeah. Um, I'm just going to take you along. I'm not really sure uh, what the process is like with a Lemon Law buyback replacement. Um, I'm not sure if they'll even allow me to film anything. But um, regardless, I'm going to bring my camera there because I'm going to film the new vehicle, the one that they're replacing this one with, just to kind of film generally the vehicle, make sure everything's in order, just so I kind of have a record of what the condition of the vehicle is when I... Um, see the car if I take delivery of the car I'm not even sure if I have the option to decline yeah I'm gonna go uh, check it out um, it's gonna be a red uh, 2022 Model X long range uh, I don't even know if they call it long range anymore to be honest with you but it's a 2022 Model X white interior um, yeah that's about all I know all right, we are pulling up to the Eatonville Service uh, Center up here. And I just wanna see if I can catch a glimpse of my Model X. Um, it could be parked over here. Looks like there is a red Model X right up here. See that little red 
Model X, that might be mine. Let's see if we can see it. Uh, looks like that might be it. Right there. All right, let's go check it out. I've been here multiple times for service. Lots of Teslas, lots of white Teslas, lots of black Teslas. So having a red one will be kind of fun, different, you know. All right, well, this must be it. Let's do a quick little walk around inspection here on this thing. So right now, uh, while I was walking around the car, I just noticed the Falcon Wing door on the passenger side would open just fine, but when it was closing, would catch and the safety sensor would catch on it and wouldn't allow it to close, which is obviously a, an issue if you can't close your door. So they're gonna take it back and take a quick look and we'll see what they say. As I just mentioned, they took the car back into the service area to try and check out this door. I'm gonna show you what it was doing see if it'll do it again but basically when you open the door it opens just fine no issues here let's check out the interior here real quick it's, it's beautiful in here like wow compared to the last one i just feel like it's such a big upgrade let's just close the door let's see it might stop watch this all right well it's working now they did a little bit of an adjustment on it um, but we're just going to kind of go through the car, check everything out. Okay, first time sitting in the 2022 Model X refresh here. Um, yeah, wow, this is, this feels more premium than the last one for sure. Um, no more key fobs. They're using these uh, key cards now, I guess. I kind of feel like I need to pick up a couple more of those. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'm just going to kind of go through everything in here make sure it's all working. Uh, how does this all work? So it looks like there's storage down in here and that pushes back. And there's another storage compartment right here. Ooh, what's in here? Front license plate screws. Nope, we'll never use those. This is all magnetic too. It's kind of cool. There's no... It's kind of sucks down. Turn signals. They're, they're like haptic. Haptic feedback, that's kind of cool. Make sure the flashing lights work. Okay. That's all work. Now this is all completely new and revamped from, uh, from my version. So all of the air vents, there's no actual vents here that you can see. So you, you look, you like you move the, your finger to where you want the air to go, which is kind of crazy. All right, well, we've got everything set up. We've got my phone set up as a key, and we've got my old Tesla here. Just want to say bye to the Tesla. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna miss that car, I really am. It's been great, it's beautiful. I'm gonna miss it. Anyways, I'm happy the Tesla did the right thing. Uh, let's go for a quick little drive here. I'm not going to record it because I want to be able to focus. Uh, I've never used a yoke steering wheel, so I am going to leave here and get on with my thoughts. All right, you guys. Well, it's been a couple of hours since I uh, had my Model X Lemon replaced. Um, I don't really want to call it a lemon, though, because, I mean, it had some issues, but, you know, it's been a couple of hours now. Um, I've gotten a little bit more used to this uh, crazy experience of driving um, a, a vehicle with a yoke. I kind of feel like I'm driving or flying a, an airplane or driving the Night 2000, <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, it's a little crazy uh, getting used to it a little bit, but um, cameras are calibrated now, so autopilot's working. The Navigate on autopilot's working. Um, yeah, and you know, it's this vehicle compared to my last Model X, the 2019, I can tell it feels a lot more premium in here. Like the seats feel a little bit softer maybe. Um, I really like how the lines of the interior are um, flowing a little bit more. Um, I do like the dry carbon look here on the uh, dashboard, which looks really, really nice. 
Um, they've improved the uh, storage situation. Um, in the last one, it was kind of like you just had some cup holders and the armrest here, whereas now you have like this uh, whole storage here, which used to just be like your armrest in the old model. So it's nice to be able to have a little bit of storage there. Sorry, my hand's in the way. Um, just using my phone today to film this, but uh, um, really liking the uh, the phone chargers implemented in here into the center console. That's really really nice. Um, I like this screen. This screen actually tilts towards the driver or the passenger. I haven't even been in the back seat yet. I'm going to let my kids be the first ones to experience that. Um, but it is Florida. It's starting to rain. So I'm just hoping that this door over here works when I pick the kids up here in just a few minutes. Uh, I would hate to be like delayed uh, with this door issue. Uh, when I was at the Tesla dealership, they, they did uh, make note of this. I did have to schedule... A service appointment to have this door looked at i guess there's a pitch sensor in there that might be misaligned or something like that so they just need to get in there i could have refused uh this vehicle and waited for the next available replacement for uh the tesla but i didn't want to wait anymore um i was just kind of like i'm already there uh you know this seemed like a pretty minor issue something that they can just fix pretty quickly hopefully this one is not a lemon and hopefully things operate smoothly and I don't have any problems with this one. Driving at home from the Tesla dealership was a very relaxing and enjoyable experience. No issues whatsoever. Um, but all in all, feels like the same car that I had before. There's just a few little tweaks, a little, a few quirks, uh, updates, if you will, um, to improve the ergonomics to improve the experience uh and i guess the overall satisfaction i i'm loving these air conditioned seats like that that is nice like that is one thing i don't think i can live without now um but overall the experience of going through the whole process initially was pretty frustrating trying to get what i thought would be a pretty simple fix fixed on my 2019 model x Going through the entire Lemon Law um, process was not that difficult, to be honest with you. Like, I thought it was going to be like, oh, I'm going to have to get a lawyer and I'm going to have to go to court and I'm going to have to do all this stuff and reports and did it. But no, it was, they basically just took my information. Um, I had a few people call me. I had Tesla call me. Uh, and they just kind of verified everything with me. That was really it. And then today when I took my, my white Model X in, the 2019 they did perform a pretty thorough inspection on it, you know, verifying the VIN, verifying everything worked, uh, that everything was included with the vehicle that was initially included, like all the keys, the chargers, uh, the tow package, all that stuff is in the vehicle, which of course I returned with the car as well. So, and once we got the thumbs up there, like I was able to finally sit in this vehicle and kind of go through the menus, go through um, all of the settings, get my phone set up as a key, and that's pretty nice. I don't have to have key fobs anymore. But I do kind of like having a key fob um, just for, I don't know, just to have the key fob would be nice. What Tesla is doing now, instead of giving you a uh, key fob, they're giving you these little cards, these Tesla cards, that you just simply put on the uh, window of your car outside, and then that will unlock it. So you just give this to valet. But I worry that valet could potentially lose this because there's not like a key ring or anything on it. So maybe they make... Uh, like a key ring or something that I can find for like a credit card size thing or for Tesla keys. Um, I'm not really sure. I may just have to order like a key fob for when I valet or if, I, or whatever. I'm just not really sure. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really happy, really satisfied with the quality of this vehicle. Um, let's see what my kids think about it. And if you're, if, if you're out there and you're dealing with a, an under warranty vehicle and you've had frustrations with the repair situation or having to repeat repeatedly if you're having to repeatedly if you're having to repeatedly if you're out there so i would say if you're out there and you're experiencing frustration or discouragement from continued attempts to get something fixed or addressed on your tesla your Model 3, your Model Y, your Model X, upcoming Cybertruck, whatever Tesla that you may be driving, just make note of everything. Keep a detailed log of your service records, 
your frustrations. Uh, it's so convenient that we have phones now, like I was able to um, record and document the sounds. Tesla did the right thing here. I'm super impressed with the whole process today. Um, they, I just had to do like a special thing with their on-site manager for the Lemon Law stuff, and I had to sign some paperwork there. But other than that, it was basically treated like a normal delivery of a vehicle, I think, because there were a few other people there working with the same advisor that I was working with, and he didn't do anything different with me than you know what he was doing with them. So basically, it was awesome. Like, I highly encourage you if you if you feel like you've got something like a lemon, you can get the whole vehicle replaced like I did. So that's pretty, that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm happy to have a vehicle that's updated. That's probably better in a lot of ways than my old one, even though my old one was amazing and I was never planning on selling the thing. I was going to keep it forever because it was, <laughs> it was amazing. Um, but yeah, I'm just super stoked to have this car and, uh, I just want to thank you all for watching. Um, I know this isn't like my normal Disney type stuff that I do here in Florida on the single rider channel. But uh, yeah, if you guys like Tesla content and you want to see more, just drop some comments here on, under the video and I'll try and make whatever videos I can about this particular Tesla or even just getting on and explaining more things. If there's something specific that you'd like to see um, or want more clarification on the whole vehicle replacement program that I had that I went through with the Lemon Laws let me know. Uh, happy to help out anyone out there, of course, that may be going through something similar because I couldn't find much information myself when I was going through it. So I'm happy to help you guys out. But thanks for watching, guys. Keeping awesome. Be true to yourself and we'll see you in the next one. Peace out.